Hello, welcome to this sermon. Every time I drive to Exeter on the A38 from Plymouth, I, I get to the bit where it merges with the M5 and my eye is drawn to an overhead gantry sign. It's one of those really big electronic things that sticks out over the carriageway and emblazoned on it in big letters is a message which says this, this sign is not in use. It's been there for years, saying the same thing. I can't help but thinking that this is wrong. It clearly is in use, giving us a message that it's not in use, if you follow me. It's a sign, but it's not fulfilling its original purpose. In fact, I think it's a complete waste of time, a distraction, but it does make me smile every time I see it as I drive towards Exeter. I'm also reminded of a painting by the Belgian surrealist artist called René Magritte, and I think it was painted in about 1928. It's simply a uh, picture of a smoking pipe, and underneath the picture of the pipe, the artist who originally wrote in French, this is not a pipe. It was an image of a pipe, but it wasn't a pipe. He wrote about his painting later, saying this, he said, the famous pipe, how people reproached me for it. And yet, could they stuff my pipe? No, it was just a representation of it. So if I'd written on my picture, this is a pipe, I'd have been lying. So a sign, an image, a representation exists, not for its own benefit, but to point away from itself to a message a truth to a reality. So when John in his gospel describes Jesus's miracle of turning water into wine at that wedding in Cana in Galilee as the first sign, what are we to make of it? And the irony is not lost on me that here we are in the middle of a lockdown when weddings are only allowed in exceptional circumstances that our lectionary points us to a story about a wedding. My heart goes out, therefore, to all brides and grooms whose wedding plans have been disrupted, postponed or even ruined because of COVID-19. But back to our Gospel reading for today. At face value, we can use this incident in Jesus' ministry to suggest that Jesus is no party pooper that when the wine ran out, he stepped in, albeit somewhat reluctantly, to make sure that the party could go on in full swing. He wanted everybody to celebrate that wedding. And no doubt the next morning there were a few thick heads because he continued to supply the best wine. But is that the message that John wants us to get from this episode? That Jesus is a really good man who likes us to have a party? In verse 11 of chapter 2, John says this, Jesus did this sign, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The idea of Jesus revealing his glory, in other words, who he is and what his work is, is something that John builds throughout the first half of his gospel, uh, particularly in the first 12 chapters. And we have a number of other well-known signs, the greatest and last of which, and most dramatic, is the raising of Lazarus. And all these signs are there to point us to Jesus' greatest sign, the cross. The new wine is poured out in such amazing quantity to demonstrate the amazing love of God and his grace, his overflowing nature of love. The new wine is part of God's new plan set forth in Christ and leads us to the cross and Christ's death. The wine also prefigures the Last Supper, where we hear Christ saying, this is my body and this is my blood, as he speaks to his disciples in that upper room as they share that meal together. You know, a sign is only of value if it gives us a clear indication, conveys a message that we need to get. That's the clear purpose of John's signs in his gospel. They're there to reinforce the point of who Christ is and what his work is. 
He wants us to get that point, that these signs are there to encourage us to believe in him. Well, that was then, and here we are in 2021. What signs can we read that will help us in our commitment to Christ? As Christian people, we need to find ways, relevant ways, of pointing people to Christ. Some of our signs, even modern signs like those on the A38 and M5, may simply not work. We face a challenge in presenting Christ to those around us. What things from everyday life can we use? How can we understand the action of God in our lives by reference to the things we see around us? How can we speak of Christ in our everyday context, in the space we occupy between Monday and Saturday, whether it's our home, our work, our leisure, or wherever we find ourselves? Invite Christ into the ordinary, into the everyday, into the unexpected and into the things that make us stop and think, even into the things that may irritate and annoy, like the wine running out. God travels with us through this lockdown. It's tough and there's no doubt about that. And yet be encouraged, read the signs and marvel at the incarnation that God is with us as we continue to travel through this lockdown in this epiphany season. God has revealed himself to us. That's a, star, a sign that's still very much in use for all of us today. So next time you have cause to pick up a glass of wine, you might want to reflect on this gospel story and remember the powerful sign that it points us to Christ and maybe use it to point others to Christ too. As for me, I'm still battling with January. So God bless you all.